a little something out here. Now, of course, we're talking about 60 years ago. Yeah. A lot of things change in 60 years. The trees grow a little taller, I guess. Yeah. And the sun is kind of setting. And the sun is setting. So this would give you an idea. That's a private dock right there. This would give you an idea of where they would sit and what it would look like. So I would say this would have been the back of the parking lot, so the pier would have probably been right here, wouldn't you think? So look at the way it looks across that water. Oh, I know. It's just beautiful. That's something else. And so they would water ski out here. There's pictures of Elvis. Just make sure we're not stepping on a copper moccasin out here. But I bet we could find some remnants of a dock. If we look real hard up here. But this is definitely a place that they would have been. I saw some some piers for a pier right over right here. Down. Yep, right down in there. I could see them when we were out there on the road. So I would say the pier, you can see what's left of it. I would say this would have been the area that the pier would have been in. And they would have sat here and looked at that. Of course, we can't see it for the trees now. Let's walk down in here. But this is right behind the hotel. You can see it's right there. And I would say the tennis courts and stuff probably were not there at the time. They would just walk out in here. But this is very similar to the sunset that they would have sat out here and watched. And the land for the hotel is only from right over there to right here, so this has to be where the pier was. You can see the pylons right there. So definitely in this area, and you see it looks like there might have been a pier over on the other side, but the land for the hotel is basically right here, so they would water ski out here. And Biloxi is where? Over on the other side where those buildings yes, are? See where those buildings are. Yeah, that's the casinos that right over there. there. Yeah. Which one? The one on the left? Yeah. Yeah. Some casinos. Okay. That's where we'll be heading to. Okay. Our casino, I think, is just right straight that way. Very cool. Beautiful out here. All right, friends, we're going to fly to glory. See what we can see. Stay tuned. So we had basically just arrived, and I flew the glory and really flew it before I really knew where anything was. This is the back of the hotel, and where the swimming pool is, is where the swimming pool was, but the hotel has changed quite a bit. They've remodeled things inside. Beautiful golf course, beautiful place there. Really a, a nice place to stay. I can understand why Elvis and June would have gone there. And they water skied there and did all kinds of cool stuff. Just, you know, just fun. And I was kind of looking around trying to figure out where we were and where things were. And I'll give you a quick overview from where we're at. Where the tennis courts are at was where the dock and all that kind of stuff was. And you can see I'm looking to the right. Those coves and stuff, he may have been up in there, but if he was, I'm not aware of it. Now, to the left of the tennis courts across the, the, the little place there, that's where all the villas were. And they actually stayed in the villas there at one point. So on the ground, at some point, I will show you the villas. And then you can see Biloxi across the bridge right there on the other side. So you have to actually come from Biloxi and cross this bridge to get to this place. It's a little bit remote, but a beautiful place nonetheless. So I'm going to fly out and turn around and I'll point out some other things. So I mentioned the bridge. That little bridge that you see right there, after you come across the big bridge that you'll see to your right, come down to the big intersection, turn left, go across the little bridge, and then you turn left into Gulf Hills, which is where we're at. We're just going to take a little quick look around. I always like to go up and kind of look just to see what I can see. Now, the chalets 
you see this house right here with the swimming pool. There was a dock, it turns out, that was on this little point that was in a kind of an L shape or a lazy L shape at the edge of that point. And those things, those marshes and stuff that you see out there were there at that time. So I'm turning around to the right of the tennis courts right there, that little piece of land that's across the waterway. That's where the chalets were. And as I mentioned, they stayed at the chalets at one point. And then the road that you see right behind the tennis courts, if you stayed to the far right, just kept going right, you would go to the house that they ended up renting at some point and stayed in. A lot of photographs of that house. Right here is where the dock was, L-shaped, kind of a lazy L, if you will. You can see some of the pylons are still there. So a really, really cool area. I can see them out there just having a great time and watching that sunset. So let's fly back up to the hotel and I want you to see the shape of the pool. You see how it's kind of rounded on the ends? You see under the diving board where it's rounded, that's what it looked like back in the day. Changed a lot since then, but back when Elvis was there, that's what it would have looked like. Beautiful place, has been for sale, may have even been sold by now or sold by the time we were there. I'm not 100% sure, but really, really cool place. Trey and I really enjoyed it. And we spent some time looking around the area and it took a little bit to figure out where things were and where things go and, and all that. But Elvis was no doubt here, no doubt. Down this road that you see right here is where the little house that they eventually rented was. There's even a photo of the pink Cadillac coming around that curve right there. Pat, which is June's best friend, took most of those photographs. When I was flying this, I still did not know where any of that stuff was. I was just using this to look around. Right here where the, the you see the golf course where I'm flying right now is where they would shoot off the fireworks. And that's the little house they rented. You can see it in the trees right there. I s didn't know it at the time, but that is the house. This is just nothing but luck that I flew over it. There are photographs of them at that house right there. The house is still the original house, the one right below us right now. So there you have it, friends. Let's move on to something else. Stay tuned. All right, so we were out here and we were talking about, you've read June's book. I have. And uh, so we were talking about where the pier, we feel like it was right there and they would definitely ski out here. But you were telling me a story about Elvis getting jealous. Yeah, so they came out here to water ski, and uh, June had never done that before. Of course, Elvis had, and uh, so Elvis had already been out on the boat. I think June said that she was on a pier, which we assume is right here over my left uh, shoulder there. But um, some instructor that worked here at the hotel at Guff Hills, uh, June was friends with in Biloxi, and he was instructing her about skiing and stuff, so she was going to ski, I guess, off of the pier. And Elvis come by out here somewhere, and she waved at him and stuff. He was never looking at her. Well, he got mad because he told her she wasn't paying attention to him. And he wanted her to be on his boat. And she was too busy trying to learn from that guy. So he got a little jealous because this guy was helping uh, June, and June was paying a lot of attention to him. And she just told him, well, I was, you know, I was nervous. I wanted to know, you know, how to ski. It wasn't because I didn't want to be with you. And um, fraud risk. Don't answer that. Yeah, friends. don't answer that. Um, so anyway, so June uh, told Elvis that, and Elvis got mad, and they were out wherever they were staying around here. And Elvis said something to June, which you need to buy her book to to. Uh, it read. wasn't nice. Because I can't say it. He would have to beat me out. <laughs> but pretty much, he told June, "I don't care, whatever." Uh, <laughs> and he went in the house, and she had to follow him in, and. June, I think, was a type that would stand up to Elvis, yep. and she didn't like what he had said to her, and she kind of told Elvis, I don't appreciate that, and Elvis gave her a playful laugh and made up with it and stuff, but yeah, he got jealous of some guy right here in this area helping uh, his girlfriend. So the king of rock and roll that was so famous he couldn't hardly go anywhere in this town without being mobbed was jealous. Of another guy that June was friends with just growing up here. <laughs> and. Um, 
Yeah, it happened right here. Yeah, right here, friends. So we're struggling with an address and we've called in reinforcements. We've got Ashley on FaceTime while we're driving through this crazy place. So it says Highway 609, which I think is Old Bayou Road. So I think if I go to the end of this road and turn back to my right, that's gonna take us where we wanna go. Stay tuned. Good luck. We don't need luck, we have Ashley. Love it. So this takes us back to the highway where we came Yeah, off this, this is not. So no, this is not it. Well, I'm gonna take this to Old Bayou Road. Let's do that, right, let's roll the it. windows up. Because Bayou Road does not exist. It says the house was owned by a family named Hack, so the boys nicknamed it the Hack House. Elvis showed me around saving those upstairs bedroom, which had a balcony overlooking the living room for the past. Not only was it private, it was also very romantic. Uh oh. I don't know what happened there. Well, yes. how do we do that? Okay, Fort Bayou Road, the answer is, is it only goes to the right right here. And that's not it, so we so gotta that's, take a left. <laughs> unless this is... So it, that might have been, used to be that road, it's just renamed now. Yeah. So we are at the corner of Ponce de Leon, And Ponce de Leon is old Bayou Road, according to what I can understand. So if you could look to see if if where that goes this way across the highway, I'll try to give you a cross street. We're on, oh no, we're not far enough down, I'm sorry. Old Fort Bayou Road. Yes, this road, I believe, used to go across. There it is, Old Fort. So we're at the corner of Washington Avenue and Old Fort Bayou. And it's cut off by this apartment complex. So now we got to figure so out. So we need to try to see where that road goes, goes to on the other side of up. this. But yeah. oh, man, this is a long ways from that hotel. This wouldn't be that far out. I'm saying it's going to be back toward the hotel. Or yeah. Whatever that okay. So what we figured out, friends, is where this blank spot is, you can see the hotels right there, where that spot is right there is where the villas were that June mentioned in the book. So all the villas were here, and in the book she says that they would walk past the villas down Bayou Road, which has got to be the road that we're on right here. And the nice lady stopped and told us that it was the very last house on the corner before you make a left or a right turn. So that means it is that house right there. That is the hack house. <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> so that's the house that Elvis and June would stay in. That is ultra, ultra cool. And this is the corner of Bayview. And I guess this road behind the hotel really doesn't have a name. Maybe it does, but I don't, it's, it's, oh, it's calling it Paso Road, P-A-S-O. So he, there it is. His room was upstairs and it had, a, and it looks like it, because she talked about it had a balcony that overlooked the living room. And as you can see, it looks open. Yeah, it? it said it had a balcony that overlooked the living room, and I want you to look right there. And we're going to go knock on their door one of these days. Yeah, we're going to knock on their door tomorrow. And see if we can get inside for yeah. you guys. You're right. It did say that. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you can kind of see there. Yeah, that, there's the balcony that overlooks the, balcony the living room. inside there? Mm-hmm. So Mr. and Miss Presley stayed in there um, with Elvis, Red West, um, all the guys in June. Amazing. So, friends, there's the hack house right here. And I don't believe that that road went that way at the time. I believe this was considered Old Bayou Road instead of Paso Road. But you can see it's right there. The water is right out there. And you can see the hue of the sunset over there. But about this time of night, or maybe just a little bit darker, they would have come right across the street, right here, to the golf course. 
And you know Elvis. Elvis loved fireworks. And according to June, he they came over into the golf course, which is literally right here. And they shot off fireworks. And the people at the golf course got upset with them and told them next time to go down to the water. You can see here's the golf course. And told them next time to go down to the water and do it, not do it on the golf course. So we believe that it happened right here. Since this is the golf course, and that is the hack house right there, that close. And if you go straight down that road right there, it comes up behind the hotel where the, uh, where the pier is on the left-hand side and where the villas were on the left on the water, and then that's on the right-hand side. So, we're right here directly. Behind me is the hack house. You see the lights? Maybe somewhere back. So I sent you where I sent you how to look it up and the saying the message failed. I reckon the pictures are not gonna go till I get internet. It's on Paso Road at the corner of, what was the view? Bayview. Bay, Bayview, so where you see Paso Road behind the hotel, mm -hmm. Bayview goes to the right, it's the house on the left, right across the street from Bayview. So check Right this on out. the corner. Uh, check this out, Ashley. It still exists. Yep. This is probably where they shot fireworks at. Remember they shot it off at the uh, golf course? Because it's still, it's still a golf course. Yep, right across the street. Check it out. This is right across the street. And remember that the hack house, he had his bedroom upstairs and it would overlook the living room. You remember that? That house is a big piece of glass. You can see the balcony. You can see the balcony overlooking. So I took a picture of it and sent it to you. Of course, we're going to knock on the door tomorrow. But... I mean, I'm sure they walked right around this area yeah. uh, from the house to get to the golf course to shoot these fireworks off. And this is big enough and is open. It, are you kind of like right in the front yard? Uh, on the side of the house. Yeah, we're on the side. What's in the front yard is the, uh, there's, there, is, did you think it was across the street? No, I'm just saying because they got a blanket and laid in the front yard or off to the side somewhere. Okay, well, I would think that would be across the street over there. Yeah, there's so, no open area between the there and the bay. Yeah, the bay, and then the lady told us the villas was right over there, just right down the street. Yeah, the villas are gone. They're all gone. The hurricane wiped them all out. But we know where they were. But we know the area, and there's nothing there, and it's just, you know, land. Uh, and it's actually right there across from where we told you the pier was, that we think. Yeah, just on the other so side. It's like just on the other side of that. You were right close to it, but. But check that out. I mean, but the description is right. They said that they walked from behind the hotel from the pier, and they would walk down the street past the villas, and the house was right there. And it's where the house is, right there across the street. They're literally maybe 300 feet on the left-hand side, on the other side of the street. Man, that's so cool. I'm so happy that it's still standing. Yep, it is I there. I for sure it might be gone with the villas. Uh, so no, it looks cool. It looks like a cool It looks place. good. Say it. Um, can you stand near the front of the house yeah. and look onto the street, like how he was watching the pink Cadillac come up? Yeah, no, I was just talking about that. So but it, now you've got to consider that the, the tree cover was probably not as much as it is right now. Because it, it, uh, uh, they talked about a roundabout or something, right? Yeah, like you watched the car come like around the curve and the roof. Right, well, curve. that would have been right up there. Yeah, so it would have been right here in front of us. Let's go check it out. Say, hey, we'll say well, you say you say uh, tight, right? geeks from Hawaii. You say that kind of stuff. Geeks from Hawaii. I'm not from Hawaii. I'm not a geek. Oh come so on. We, <laughs> <laughs> the first I, I step, the first step to recovery is realizing okay, so, that you're a geek. There's the house right there. If you can see it. Oh, so somebody's inside. Yeah, they live there. Yeah, somebody lives there. It's nice. It looks nice. It's been fixed up. But this is a yard. So they said that the, so tell us the story. So Ashley, where, was the, where did they put their uh, blanket at? Do you know that? <laughs> tell us the story. No, I, I mean, about oh, the it, was car. Actually, it was right by that tree. You see that tree? It was right over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's in front of the house. Yeah. So tell us the story about the car. Full moon. 
So tell us a story. You're on television, so, on YouTube. Oh, okay, hello. So he was watching his parents arrive from Memphis, and so they would, they drove up in the pink Cadillac, and he was watching them drive around the curb. Okay. Well, that curve is street. right up behind you, so let's go up there and look at it. Let's go look at it. Can you see it? So from upstairs... That house wouldn't have been there. The trees would not have been there and they would have come around that curve right there. So was he watching them from the house? Yeah. Okay. So that so would make sense. There's a curve right there. There is a curve right there. Actually. And he would have been upstairs in this house. That house not there. Those trees not there. And he could have seen the car come around the curve. Yeah. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That makes sense. That is really cool. Pink Cadillac, right? Wait, no. Yeah, pink, pink Cadillac. So the pink Cadillac came all the way from Memphis, friends, with Gladys and Vernon. And it came right here to this house. Right there. That's ultra cool. That's what that is. That's all right. so cool. We're going to get some better light. Wait, 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 wait. Back. That's another piece of the Elvis history from the spa guy. That's and right. Ashley Drew and Trey Miller. That's right. That's right. So, friends, uh, I don't know how I've done this video as far as how how it's worked. We filmed a lot about this, but I wanted to tell you a story Ashley Drew told me, and that is that June and him would take a blanket out and set it across the street in this field right here. And of course you could see the water right out there, but they would sit right here and relax and look at the stars and that kind of stuff. And all that happened right across the street from the hack house. So this is from a video of them out doing target practice. I believe it was in front of the hack house. You could see the cars. I think that was a dead end just beyond it. There's the cars parked at the dead end. That's Elvis at the corner of that house right there. That's Red and Elvis. Red's got a gun. You see that right at the corner. And then look at this. That is the sound side or the water out there. And you could see Elvis holding that up for Red to shoot it out of his hand, which is pretty crazy pointing there. Sunkiss Country Club. There's the building. It is original. I'll show you a photograph of where this thing that happened here was, and then we'll take you to where it happened. Stay tuned. In the book, June says that they came here and jumped the fence, and they came up in here, and unfortunately it's gone, but it was right back here. Right there where that mound is at. It's here, it's just been covered up. That is where the swimming pool is that she brought Elvis to. They were at the hack house and he was wanted to go somewhere. They woke up and there was nobody there. And he grabbed his keys and said, let's go down to the pool. And she said uh, at the hotel there by the hack house, and she said, no, I got a better idea. I've got a place that we can go that nobody will bother us. And this is where they came and they skinny dipped in this pool right here. And when I say skinny dip, she says that down to their underwear anyway, not to be too graphic, but this is where the pool was. And look at the water right out there. What a beautiful place. Very nice people here. Now the night watchman, his name was Oliver. They told us here that his name was Oliver. He worked here for 40 years and he died in here in the men's locker room and they say that he haunts the building even until today. So now you know that Elvis and June Juanico came here to Sunkiss Country Club in the pool and had a fun night and Oliver never caught him or he may have just been in here just watching them out here having fun. You never know. Oliver, you naughty boy. Oh, what a night. Your friend Buddy that passed away, do you know yeah. where he's buried at? Or did, was that his uh, nickname? I'm sorry, I don't know. Was that a really? nickname? Buddy. Uh, Buddy is a nickname. Um, I, 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 his name was William Rankin Conrad. Wow. Uh -huh. He seemed like a cool guy with your stories. He was very cool. 
he he because uh, uh, you you talked about he uh he bought that nice car and uh yeah. you and your friend uh, uh drove it up to um to guff hills mm -hmm. and uh, i thought that was pretty interesting <laughs> yeah so how did uh, yeah. so he had money because you explained he had uh, money well buddy buddy inherited uh, quite a bit of money during that period wow but he had a good time with his life. He he enjoyed. Oh, it. absolutely! He had a marvelous time. Because I, I kind of like how you ended it. That you were glad that he uh, enjoyed spending his money with the time that uh -huh. he had with us. Uh -huh. Wow. Well, yeah, he died shortly after that. Yeah, you said thirty-three. Yeah, and that's uh, a damn shame. Yeah, I'm about to, I'm about to be thirty-two tomorrow. So you know that's scary. I know your life is just beginning. <laughs> and you, but you have no idea. You have no idea when it's going to end. So you know. <laughs> Really? But, you know, so you got to enjoy it. That's how your story sit. It, that's right. Yes, ma'am. Make each day count. That's what I do. Yes. But I um I hope I hope to get to meet you. I hope to get to meet you, and uh, I really appreciate your uh, book, though. Well, okay, I'm glad you enjoyed it. June, we're off to the next spot. Thank you so much. This this okay, is a big deal. You. We appreciate it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Y'all be safe. Yes, ma'am. Bye bye. Hey, thank you. So friends, this guy's name is William Conrad, but not the William Conrad that you know, the actor. This was Buddy Conrad that was a friend of June's that eventually became a friend of Elvis's. So tell us about Buddy. All right, so Buddy to me was a really cool guy reading uh, June's story. They said that uh, June said Buddy was the biggest Elvis fan in the world, actually. So when uh, he found out about you know June dating Elvis, he had to meet him. So uh, she set it up where Buddy was going to go with her and uh, her friend Pat to uh, Guff Hills um, to see uh, see Elvis. To the hack house. To the hack house. And uh, so Buddy shows up with a new car, a Ford, I believe. Now, why? Why? How was he able to afford a brand new Ford? Well, yeah, uh, they said Buddy inherited uh, a lot of money. So, so Buddy, was very Buddy was a rich young guy, a <laughs> young guy here in, uh, in Biloxi. So anyway, so Buddy says, well, June, uh, you take the car, you and Pat take the car and drive it up and impress Elvis. I'll show up later. He didn't want to just show up with a car, you know. So, so June gets in the car, Pat gets in the car, they drive to the hack house. Elvis and uh, Red West and them are standing outside at the hack house, and he sees this nice Ford car pull up into the driveway, and he notices June's behind the wheel. First thing he asks is, where'd you get the car? You know, so June tells about Buddy, and uh, he's a good friend of theirs, he and Pat's. Well, Elvis gets jealous, and Elvis says some things. He and kind of smarts off to her. Read the book. <laughs> hey, read the book, because you want to know what Elvis said. So, uh, believe me. So he goes in the hack house. He's mad. June's mad because of what Elvis said to her. And uh, June talks about she goes in there, and Elvis didn't really talk for a second, a few seconds, and then he kind of broke into a little laughter and stuff. Of course, they made up, and then Buddy comes in the next probably 30 minutes, and he hits it off with uh, Elvis. And um, he and Elvis would become good friends. Elvis would actually let Buddy come along. Uh, he and June and Pat uh, went to um, Miami, Florida, Jacksonville, T uh, Daytona Beach on that uh, Florida tour with him in 56, I believe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, Buddy drove one of their nice cars uh, there. Buddy also had a motorcycle. So, you know, he had some money. And uh, June said that he spent his money. But uh, Buddy uh, lent... Uh, the motorcycle to Elvis to drive because Elvis uh, had one at uh, back in Memphis but he knew about it and he brought it over to show show Elvis uh, his motorcycle he said here I want you to take a ride for it so you know Elvis loved loved him so Elvis gets on the motorcycle and that's when June takes Elvis around Biloxi Mississippi to some of these places that we're about to show you or well, we already have shown or we have already shown you <laughs> like the bridge did I you know yeah um, but anyway so um, Buddy was really an interesting guy. So Buddy dies at age 33 years old. He had cancer. And uh, June talks about in her book that he spent all the money he had, over a half a million dollars. Buddy spent it, and she was glad that he spent all the money that he had because he got to enjoy his life, the little life that he had here. But uh, another thing, Buddy always had money in his pocket. And Elvis never carried money, like we talked about earlier in a, in a Elvis episode. But uh, so they stopped to get gas uh, somewhere around here, and Elvis didn't have no money to get gas. 
And of course, Buddy said, I, that's okay, EP. He called him EP, by the way. That's okay, EP. I got you. I got you covered. He pulled out a wad of money. And I think Elvis said, that's a cool guy right there. So uh, later on, a few years goes by in the 60s, uh, uh, Buddy would actually go to Graceland, I think twice, and get up and, and uh, go party with uh, Elvis at Graceland. So Buddy was one of the guys that was always welcomed around Elvis Presley. Also, when he died in the 60s, when June finally got in contact with Elvis again, I believe in the late 60s or early 70s, it would have been the 70s because it was in Vegas when he played at the Hilton, he asked about, so how's, how's my, my friend Buddy Conrad doing? Uh, it was actually 69 at the International. 69 when he opened in Vegas. She got on the phone with him because she went to a show in 69. He wanted to know how his good old friend Buddy Conrad is doing back in uh, Biloxi. And she told him that, um, unfortunately, that he passed away. Said that Elvis went silent on the phone. And she, he said, um, June, why does the good always die young? That was a good guy right there. So Elvis was very hurt about that news. And here's Buddy. I thought Buddy was a cool guy, so we had to come find his grave for you to tell his story because it's important in the Elvis uh, world. And friends, we would not have been able to find this grave if it hadn't been for June. I asked her today what Buddy's real name was, and at 80 years old, right off the top of her head, she said, William Conrad. And it, I can't, what was it, Rankin? William Rankin Conrad is what she said. And one more thing is, I think it's interesting that, that Elvis didn't have many people that were wealthy like him hanging around. Mm -hmm. Everybody kind of wanted money or hung for that. This was one person that didn't need Elvis's money, and I think that that may be one reason why he really liked that guy. Oh, he but somehow they hit it off. I mean, think about it. He showed up with a car that Elvis had, too, and Elvis thought that was the greatest thing. And the best thing about Buddy is he threw the car, uh, car keys to Elvis right in the driveway. He said, hey, man, I want you to take it for a spin. I just bought it today. He just bought the car, I think, that morning to take for June and Pat to drive to Guff Hills to impress Elvis. And so that, so imagine that. I mean, you know, this guy was, and I asked June. I said, June, I had told you earlier, I said, June, uh, your friend Buddy sounded like a really cool man. And, he, and she told me, Trey, he was cool. So, you know. That's what she said. So. We need Buddy's story to be told to you guys. Very interesting stuff, friends, right here. Now, if you want to come pay homage to, to Buddy, William Rankin Conrad Jr., you come in this cemetery. There's Highway 90 right there. We're in, we're in Gulf, where are Ocean we at? Springs. Ocean, Springs. Ocean Springs. So that's where the bridge is that way. Yeah, we're right come, across from Biloxi. Come down from uh, front across the bridge. And you come into here and you can see the cemetery office up there. You go on the, on the left road, or the right side road, I mean, and you see the very first set of, you see there's no graves out there. So the very first set of graves in the middle, and he is one, two, he's two graves in, and we'll count how many graves down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, I'd count 12. So 12 from there at the very first row to here, just before this tree, and then he's right here. 